Uh, I'm here to talk about respiratorius. And main, uh, the main focus of my presentation will be on the VAL001 project, which is uh, our um, priority project within, within our portfolio. Respiratorius was founded in 1999 with a focus on respiratory diseases. And I see the former CEO of the company, Jürgen, there. <laughs> Um, and the, uh, the ambition then was to identify candidate drugs for uh, treatment of COPD and asthma. And in 2011, uh, Respiratorius acquired the rights to uh, acquire the company Valkyria, uh, where I was one of the founders. And along with that acquisition, uh, Respiratorius got the rights to the VAL001 uh, project. Meanwhile, we still have the, the other projects running, uh, but the priority uh, was then on the, the cancer project, lymphoma project. Um, the pipeline of Respiratorius uh, is the, as I mentioned, the VAL001 project. Uh, and it is uh, for treatment of diffuse large B cell lymphoma. And uh, end of um, February this year, we reported results from the uh, phase one slash 2A uh, clinical study. Uh, and the result was very encouraging and very positive. Uh, I will dig into a little bit deeper into the uh, results and the project as such later on. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Respiratorius uh, originally was focused on uh, COPD and asthma. And the project then was the RESP-1000 and RESP-2000 project. Uh, and we also have a project called RESP-3000, which is a second use of the 2000 project. Uh, but then it's for uh, cardiovascular diagnostics. Uh, so it's a quite a comprehensive um, uh, pipeline for a uh, small company. And here we go with the... <laughs> The former presenter mentioned his hair. <laughs> well, don't talk about it. Um, well, it's a quite comprehensive um, pipeline for a uh, virtual company. Uh, but on the other hand, it's uh, quite positive to have several projects to communicate results within. Uh, and we're quite happy about it from that point of view. The uh, VAL001 uh, project, as I mentioned, is a pretreatment for uh, prior chemotherapy for, um, with RCHOP, uh, which is an immunochemotherapy for treatment of diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Uh, the key aspect, this is uh, the, the pitch that we are using right now for the, the project, uh, there is a, qu a, cl a quite um, uh, clear uh, amount of patient, eligible patient, uh, annually, about 60,000 patients in the US and Europe. And the, um, what we have proven is that we have a statistically significant survival benefit with the uh, substance as such, or a candidate drug. And we have also performed a uh, health economic uh, value analysis uh, and as you will see later on, it shows for a uh, pricing leeway on the project. On top of that, well, uh, concluding those factors, we, we see a, a considerable forecast turnover for the project. Uh, on top of that, we also see that we have low development risk because it is substances that, uh, within the, um, uh, the v VAL001 project consists of uh, substances that are well known and has been used for several years and decades even. Uh, so it's a low project risk from that point of view. And as we have also an orphan drug uh, designation for a project, we have also benefits from that point of view. So this is the key aspect of the project. And what is then uh, B001? It is a combination of uh, approved and well-tolerated drugs, uh, which are valproatic well acid or valproate, and prednisolone, a, a steroid. 
Um, valproate or valproatic acid, which is the usual, usual form, has been used for treatment of epilepsy uh, since the 60s. And uh, prednisolone, our uh, preclinical pre data, uh, in vitro data, shows that uh, prednisolone potentiates uh, the cytotoxic effect in combination with, with valproatic acid. So the, the project as such is the blister pack you can see on the, in this slide here. Uh, that is five days of therapy prior to the, uh, the um, um, chemotherapy, uh, which starts three a day, uh, two days before you enter into the clinic. On the third day, you, uh, you also initiate the chemo, or immunochemotherapy. Uh, and it's twice daily administration of valproatic acid and in combination with um, prednisolone. It can be performed by the patient by himself. Uh, it is an oral administration. And our new formulation of valproatic acid is intended, so it's twice daily administration of valproatic acid. So the blister pack is one cycle out of six, and the whole package contains the whole uh, treatment with immunochemotherapy and uh, sensitized by VAL001. Uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Uh, it is a, the most common type of aggress aggressive lymphoma. As I mentioned, it's 60,000 new cases in US and Europe annually. And the median age, it's about 65 years. The standard first line therapy, which almost all patients uh, uh, undergo, is our job. It's a combination of um, um, rituximab and the chemotherapy shop. So it's an immunochemotherapy. It can be considered as an ineffective uh, treatment as 10 to 15 percent of the patients uh, does not respond to the treatment as, as such. They are refractory to the first line treat uh, treatment. Out of those that actually respond, 40% uh, relapses within 18 months. And the overall five-year survival is about somewhere in between 60 and 70%. And resistance to the CD20 uh, target uh, therapy with rituximab is an increasing problem. And the treatment regime as such is challenging, especially for the elderly. Um, and the, the start of the project and the invention as such was uh, by Christina Drott, one of the founders of Valkyria, who's now on the board of Respiratorius. And she, um, she works as an oncologist and she met all these patients every day uh, that did not respond to the chemotherapy or um, did the relapse. And what she did was develop a uh, cell line assay to identify substances that would synergize uh, uh, with the uh, chemotherapy. And what you see in this slide is two specific cell lines that are typical uh, for or specific for diffuse large B cell lymphoma. And what you see is um, uh, the viability of uh, those cell lines. Uh, when exposed to, on top of it, at 100% cell viability is the control, that is the cell as such. And over 72 hours, as the experiments was performed, you can see what happens when you, uh, you add both uh, the chemotherapy, SHOP, as well as uh, uh, valproatic acid, and you combine the valproatic acid with the chemotherapy. And what you see on, what, which I have marked with red dots, is the response when you combine a high concentration uh, of valproatic acid in combination with the chemotherapy. You have a, a, a high uh, degree of decrease of the cell viability. And that was the, really the starting point of the project. As I mentioned, um, the substance is well known, so we actually were able to start a clinical uh, phase 1 slash 2A study almost immediately using available substances on the market for a new uh, indication. 
and the uh, the um, uh, the chemotherapy uh, is uh, divided in, into six cycles. Each cycle uh, includes. Um, two days of valproatic acid before entering to the clinic, and then you have the chemotherapy. And that is the blister pack, as I mentioned. It is wrong there, it was in March, uh, it was February the study was ended, as the last patient included was diagnosed as treated from his cancer. The re overall results from the study was very positive. You can see that the one and two year survival of the combination of valproatic acid or VAL001 and chemotherapy, you have a 100% one year overall survival and 96% overall survival. And that is compared to, a re when comparing this to a, a reference group, uh, from the Swedish lymphoma registry, you have instead you have um, 89 percent. Uh, oh, something wrong with my. <laughs> uh, you have um, 82 percent two-year survival uh, when comparing with the reference group. So the results are very encouraging uh, from the study. In uh, uh, with those results and the uh, market exclusivity we have with the project, we have both a patent estate, we have patent granted in US, Europe, uh, Japan and Korea, and we have also filed patent for the specific uh, formulation of valproatic acid uh, dedicated for this indication. We have also been granted orphan drug designation for the project, which means that we will have a market exclusivity uh, 10 years in Europe and seven years in US when the product is introduced to the market. So there is a market exclusivity uh, in also with the project. Um, as I mentioned, we, we performed a health economic study. And what this study shows is that Using the results we have from the outcome of the uh, phase 1 slash 2a study, where we have, well, we can pick a number, we have approximately 90% overall survival. And given those numbers, you can see that the pricing per treatment would be about 150,000, the willingness to pay, uh, calculated as the, the quality, the qualified, uh, quality adjusted life year expectancy, uh, about 1 million. So that's um, a, a normal calculation you do with, within talking about health economics. So the willingness to pay would be in the range of 150,000 uh, per treatment. And then you can run the numbers when you have 60,000 patients. So it is an attractive project from that point of view. Uh, we are currently uh, running an exit process. Uh, we have a couple of companies we are speaking to. Uh, meanwhile, running this process, we are continuing the development within the project. We have, as I mentioned, we have a patent for the formulation or a patent application. And currently we are running a uh, project together with Patheon um, in U uh, UK for a specific formulation of the um, valproatic acid. And just um, in a couple of weeks, we will have a, uh, a meeting with EMA on the scientific advice for the uh, protocol of a phase two slash three study. That is a market uh, uh, study uh, for the project. So we, and we are progressing that to see, uh, not to sit and wait uh, what can, can happen, but so we are progressing uh, internally. Um, I would just briefly mention also the RESP-1000 project. It is a novel first-in-class anti-inflammatory and bronchodilators for COPD and asthma. And for those who haven't seen the slides before, what you see here is the, uh, the bronchial contraction of uh, ex vivo uh, lung tissue. And what our substances are able to do is seen in this slide. You have a bronchial uh, contractor, which is uh, lidocaine D4, uh, which then contracts the, um, the tissue, uh, ex vivo tissue. 
And when added the, res, um, the respiratory substances, you can see that you have a 100% uh, uh, completed relaxed uh, airways. So they are very um, potent, those substances or the res uh, substances. Um, Currently, we are um, reforming the project, uh, and we will do a um, in vivo efficacy study, uh, and then uh, a safety assessment studies, that is, talk studies, for an IND application with a goal to start a phase one study. And the background is that we filed, we have already IP uh, on the, the first candidate drug, but we filed a, f a patent for a new candidate drug earlier this year or mid-summer, which will actually give us 20 more years of uh, market exclusivity when granted. And uh, so we have progress within both the uh, cancer project as well as the uh, respiratory, pro uh, respiratory projects. And that concludes my presentation. Now I think I'm on. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thank you for an interesting presentation. Um, you mentioned an exit strategy or exit process actually yep. going on, and you also mentioned two companies you're talking to. Mm. I'm guessing you can't name them. No. No, for <laughs> obvious reasons. Um, uh, quite interesting, interesting though, because uh, it's not we're not talking immune oncology or new molecules here. Mm. Uh, so. What do you see as the, uh, the perfect or the, the, the likely licensee then? Is it a specialty pharma or could it still be one of the top 20? I wouldn't say it would be one of the top 20 or the top big pharma. Uh, I wouldn't because I still think they are fully occupied with uh, biologics uh, instead. So, and this is a another type of project. It is an orphan drug project, and uh, I, th I don't think their focus is in within that. No. Okay. And, uh, and the fact that you, you mentioned the, the risk mitigation, uh, the fact that you're working with well-known uh, substances, mm. uh, what does that do for the attractiveness of your pro projects in their eyes? Um, the attractiveness, I would say that I think the um, uh, having an orphan drug designation is, of course, attractive. Uh, and, and also, um, from a risk mitigation perspective, I think it's also a, a, good, uh, a good sign. And also that um, it is very short time to the market compared to having a new candidate drug. Mm. Uh, I mean, we are... Uh, we can soon be ready to run a phase 2b slash 3 study. So, uh, which is, um, and we are now going to have a scientific advice with EMA to, uh, to discuss number of, uh, the sample rate, the number of patients. Mm. Uh, and, but I think it, it's uh, within reach uh, of having it on the market. And I think that's something that might be attractive also for pharma companies. Mm. And uh, you, you, you show that the quite promising results that you mm. had, um, a great uh, um, survival rate uh, yeah. after two years. And uh, do you expect these high numbers in survival to, to persist when you go into a bigger cohorts of patients? I have no reason to, uh, to doubt that uh, it will be uh, significantly different, at least. Mm. Okay. Uh, we don't have much time. You had a long presentation, but that was, that's okay. Uh, thank you very much, Yuan, for thank this. You. Thank you. Give me a warm hand. Thank you.